Now, the NHS has been in the headlines after Tory MEP Daniel Hannan landed himself in hot water after describing the service on, national, on US TV as a 60-year mistake. Joining us to talk about that is Afzal Khan, a Labour councillor, and Faraz Bati, a councillor for the Conservative Party. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Morning, guys. Now, I suppose we will st we'll start with you because obviously it was a, uh, a Conservative MEP, shall we say. What's the response been like from Conservatives? Is this something that people agree with, Daniel Hanan? I think so. Straight after his comments on the US television, uh, our party leader, leader David Cameron came out strongly and he sort of made his views known that we are we respect NHS, we are the party of NHS and we are looking to do better things for NHS regardless of one member of European Parliament making his comments. Um, my personal opinion is the comments that was made by the MEP was his co comments alone and and you've got to give him a slight credit of bringing up this argument because there is problems within the NHS system that needs to be looked at where there has been improvement but there is also a problems and what the current government is doing is they're reforming over reforming over reforming over rather than talking about the problems that exist and as far as it goes as i say, I, I, I strongly uh, go back to the point of whatever daniel hanan said he said it <coughs> within his own capacity not a, a, a policy of conservative party now what would you say about saying it's unpatriotic <coughs> whether it's between the parties themselves or that, that is a separate issue. What about the fact of how Britain comes across to the rest of the world? We need to surely put up a united front, come across as a strong country, and by sort of dumbing down our own medical system and showing the flaws, that's actually not giving a very good message to the rest of the world. Well, the thing is, uh, if, if one member of European Parliament represents the view of every single political a person within this country, then I want to really know what does the future hold for us as a, as a country as a whole. There is many MEPs, many MPs in the government as well as in the, in, the, in the opposition that come out with all sorts of comments, but that doesn't mean to say this country is falling to bits or the system is falling to bits. And, and, uh, and as I said, is, it is his comments are only not shared by the people of Conservative Party. But he says, and I quote, he wouldn't wish the NHS on anyone. That's an incredibly strong statement. That's not just pointing out some flaws or some improvements and it's not really a constructive statement it's a very negative statement indeed but that, that again I will I will stress back up that's his own view not the view of Conservative Party and I cannot go and strap his face off for saying that because that's his personal view but <coughs> I, I mean if he is put it I mean which he did try to put it as Conservative Party view that's why the party leader, leader David Cameron came out very strongly uh, criticizing what he has said and came out with with our own policies in terms of the future and the NHS now, Afzal Khan, obviously Labour, you must be quite happy that he sort of made this blunder. No, we're not happy at all, actually. End of the day, it's the Labour Party which created and sustains and what has been improving the last decade of the NHS. I think what concerns me is, even if you're listening to Faraz today, he's saying, you know, he's alone. But he himself is sitting here, he's giving him credit. It's his words, not mine. And this is the issue. Well, what you've got in the Conservative Party is actually two faces, one face which they want to give it to the public and the other is the real face of the Conservative Party and I think what this gentleman was talking about was the real face of the, uh, the Conservative Party and that's the issue really, that uh, what they're doing really is if they, they just want to get into the power, <coughs> they'll say anything to please the people and as soon as they're in power you will see what the true faces of the Tories are. Now obviously the NHS does get a lot of bad press when it does a fantastic service, Absolutely. but the fact of the matter is it's not just Daniel Hannan who's criticising, a lot of people have criticised it and um, it was revealed over the weekend that Bournemouth University um, found that diets in prison actually have more nutritional content. What do you think? Do you think the NHS and the patients are being treated as well as they should be? I mean, look, there has been improvement in NHS. We as a party recognise that. But there is also lots of bureaucratic tape around the NHS, which is delaying lots of people. I mean, look at it. I mean, I give you an example, and I challenge anybody, in fact, to go to their local A&E, and they will find at least two, three, four ambulances waiting outside the emergency department with the patients inside waiting to be transferred to one of the wards. I mean, to me, if NHS has improved so much, why is then patients are waiting in the ambulances, in the car parks of accident and emergency? You look cases over cases where people have died in ambulances waiting to be transferred to wards. So improvement is happening, but this constant reform, which Labour Party are very much proud of for the last 12, 15 years since they've been in power, each time NHS beginning to get it right, they go for another reform. And that reform costs money. And it's the money of us, the taxpayers. 
And, and, and to me, I mean, I will very frankly say is the Labour Party need to stop experimenting with the taxpayers' money, stop experimenting with the NHS as whole, and give these doctors and GPs and the consultants and surgeons a, a say, don't tie them up with targets, give them outcomes. Because currently what you see is, and, and Labour Party, and I'm sure Councillor Khan will come back with it, so many waiting lists down, so much waiting lists up, operations have been done, etc, etc. But look at what's happening actually in the hospitals. Hospitals are treating patients like a <coughs> conveyor belt. And that is not healthy for anyone. Afsal, is it very easy to make them comments when you're not actually running the NHS? It's is it classic, easy? isn't it? Mm -hmm. When you're in opposition, you don't have to do anything, but you can always throw the dirt on the other side. The fact is simple, that NHS has been transformed. He, uh, Faraz Batish talks about example. Let me tell you, the last of this weekend gone, my wife needed a treatment. This was at the weekend. Now she rang the, the, uh, the telephone system which they have nationally and they said, look, it could take up to four hours, right? Within 20 minutes, the doctor called her back and then when they spoke, they said, I think you need to go to hospital. She then was given an appointment within 35 minutes that the doctor will see her. She went to the local hospital. They, they, they took the sample, etc. Before she then came out, they had the results of those samples and then they they gave her prescription as well. Now, that is impressive. Now, this is a first hand. So you ask anyone who's experienced it, I say. I don't know these people uh, that keep dying, uh, Frost talks about. The fact remains that there's evidence of everyone who uses the trans NHS has been transformed. And the question which uh, Frost also touched on was reforms. Look, we are humans. There is a progress going on all the time. There's a research coming out every day. And therefore, those reforms have to take place. To stand static is not right. We must be constantly looking at improvements, and that's what's required. <coughs> Reform is good, but on, on the certain topics or certain subjects or uh, introduce new things, not the restructure of the whole organization. At the same time, it is very good. Khan, you know, M Mrs. Khan was given a very excellent treatment by the local NHS in Manchester. But at the same time, I have a constituent of mine mm -hmm. whose son was taken into hospital. The hospital sent it back and the poor child died 48 hours later. Why? Because the hospital failed to recognize the condition that he had. And then you go back to the hospitals and honestly, them doctors and nurses are being strained and stretched mm -hmm. because this Labour Party's targets that they're trying to achieve. Many doctors and nurses are claiming the patients have been sent into wrong wards because to keep up with these targets. Come on, I mean, let's live in the real, real, uh, real world of today. I mean, uh, again, um, uh, I, was, I was in talk with one of the, 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 the staff of a private institute and they were saying a lot of NHS hospital patients were sent to me. To me, it's a good idea. If the treatment is available fast enough, why not? <coughs> but at the same time, when I'm talking about reform, Reform to a particular, you know, new diseases are coming in, new cures are coming in, fine, introduce them to NHS, but don't go for the whole structural change. And, 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 and as I said, people can go and look through the facts. Over the last 12 years, there has been so many structural change in the NHS of, mm. of Britain than anywhere else in the world. I mean, not every country changes their structure of their medical services every six months or a year. And this is what we've seen under the Labour government. Now, it was, you know, it's fantastic to hear a positive story like the same as comes a success story, and that is great. And I guess it is human nature to concentrate on the negatives ones. You know, there, there is a lot of success stories on the NHS. They do do a lot of good work that is often and frequently overlooked, particularly in the media. It's something that we don't want to give attention to because a bad story makes a good story. So that's, you know, acceptable. But surely, as you're saying, one case of, it, of people receiving bad treatment is one case too many. And whether you have 100 good cases, if you've got a child dying or somebody not getting enough treatment, then that is something that definitely should be stopped. Now, do you think that the good work that you're receiving, as you mentioned there, you gave your own case of a doctor, that's down to the individuals. Yes, there are some fantastic individuals that are really the pillars of the NHS that are holding them up and that are providing a fantastic service. But the resources of the NHS as a whole, what the, M, you know, what the government are providing the NHS, the resources themselves, that that's what's lacking. So yes, we all could have some success stories because there are decent people providing that good service, but the resources themselves, would you say that that's something that really needs to be well, looked at? Let's get the facts straight. The resources to the NHS has been more than doubled since the Labour has come into power. The doctors alone have increased by 38,000. Nurses, over 80,000. The biggest plan, the history of NHS, of building different uh, hospitals have been taken place. Now, these are 
Im not imaginary things, they are real improvements and that's why, what you, for example, if you take cancer, 99% of the patients would be seen by the consultant and the, in two weeks and they will be in treatment within a month. This is unheard of. We need to be proud of our NHS. It's an exemplary. Look, any human system, there will be errors. You cannot eliminate errors, but all you can do is make sure you put check and balances in there so that you can reduce them. Wherever humans are involved, errors will happen. And this is all what's happening. And what these conservative parties do is they pick up these errors and say, this is the reality of the whole NHS. And this is how they really put down the NHS, which in a way we should be proud of. Is the best example in the world how at the point of a need any one person doesn't matter you see the conservatives are all right because they look after the rich people quickly before we go is gordon brown fighting a losing battle are we next in line for a conservative government yes we are